Hey everybody, I'm Kushan, and welcome back to more Command Modern Air and Naval Operations. Today, I'm going to be continuing work on my Cauldron North Sea scenario, which I've renamed to Le Calme, Avant, La Tempet, please excuse my French, which basically means calm before the storm. So two weeks ago, when I originally started this, I did the air order of battle for both the European Union and the United States and UK player forces. So today I'm going to be working on the players naval order of battle. The first portion of the scenario is actually going to have the player basically escorting convoys through Denmark, through the Denmark Straits over here to Poland. And so I it will be setting up those groups. All right, and some big news on the command front this week in that the version 1.09 release candidates are now up for download. Um, you can get those on the forums. This is uh, RC2, build 736. Um, as you can see here, you can already see one of the big new features right here is that you now have labels on the map. And when you zoom in, you actually get major cities which I think is just awesome. It really adds quite a bit to the map. I love it. And over here, it does take a little bit for them to kind of come in sometimes, but you can see. But even just zoomed out when you just have even just country, country names like this, I think adds a lot. English Channel, stuff like that. All right, so let's get started. Me mess with my windows here on my second monitor real quick. Now Balukin doesn't actually have auto Balukin set up, so I'm actually having to monitor both ch both uh, Balukin's chat room and the Twitch chat today. So if I uh, kind of get silent or have to start typing, you guys know why. All right, so first order of business is this week. I've com kind of compiled this list here of just kind of the general types of units I want. I've got several different types of merchant ships, um, some US NS ships, uh, the LCS independence, which actually, as of Flight 2, the LCS will become frigates once again. And then DGGs, some CGs of the Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga class, Daring class, uh, fr or uh, destroyers, the Duke class UK frigates, and then down here I have some French and German submarines. But those will probably be generated by a script. So I'm going to get started here. Now, here at the start, I'm just going to be just kind of placing units in groups, and then I'll kind of do like a naming pass later, and then I'll go through and kind of rename all these units. Now, given that this is a 2018 scenario, I'm not too going to be too worried about, you know, making sure that things are too accurate, let's say. So I'm going to start off with the Tycho's. Helps if I can actually type. All right, so sort by year. So I'm going to start off here, and I don't suppose, nope. So I'm going to start off just with the Bunker Hill here. Now, and again, I'm just going to kind of start placing units. I'll kind of, when I actually start doing the naming pass is when I'll come through and I'll swap out, you know, the Bunker Hill, you know, for for like the Anzio if I need it. So we'll have, and I'm, I'm aiming between 8 to 16 of these kind of escort groups. So I'll probably settle around 12. And they'll be, you know, scattered all across the North Sea, and maybe up up here into. I think this is the Norwegian Sea up here. I think this still counts as Norwegian Sea, but they'll be kind of scattered all through this area at the start. All right, and each of these groups will probably consist of uh, probably two to four vessels, I would say. So we've got a Tycho. And actually, filter it even better. We'll just go with the Burke. 
And let's go with just the Bain Bridge. Here, so we'll say this group is maybe two DDGs and we'll give them an LCS. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll go with the second Tycho for this group. We'll call this the, the flag group of this whole kind of task force up here. So we'll just copy the Bunker Hill. All right, so there's kind of one group and then I'll worry about kind of grouping these guys up later. And then over here, let's do, let's have a daring. Oh, Ukraine. Helps if I select United Kingdom. So we'll have one daring. And type 23. Um, we'll call it the Norfolk. So we'll have a daring over here, a daring, a Norfolk, and two type 23s. And next group will be a daring, a Norfolk. I'm actually a little bit, something I noticed yesterday is that the UK Global Combat Ship is already, which doesn't come actually come into service until 2021, but it's the replacement for the Type 23s, is actually already inside the DB. And so I'm a little tempted on maybe using these in this scenario. You know, it being 2018, maybe they built the first one a little quick. Since I think construction is supposed to, is theoretically the last time I read, supposed to start next year. All right, so back to this. We'll have a Burke with some LCSs. And I think I'm going to go for some independent the independent or the freedom class. So we'll have a Burke and say, and now I'm, I'm not worrying too much about, you know, unit formations or anything like that. Now these LCSs I'll probably modify at some point to actually be like a flight, a quote unquote flight to LCS. And that'll probably uh, add a, uh, a small VLS cell to them and remove the Hellfire, which I think is just absolutely useless. All right, so we got a Burke, LCS over here. See another Burke, maybe a Daring. And a Type 23. And then maybe this group also has an LCS as well. Mm -hmm. Just checking out chat. Um, so next group, so how many groups is that? That is four groups. So another DGG, we'll place this one. Now there isn't gonna be an actual carrier battle group in this scenario. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, the carrier battle group for this scenario will actually be out here. Um, but given that this, well, I take that back. This will probably, this will definitely be a seven day scenario. So the carrier group will probably start way over here in the North Atlantic, which should give it plenty of time, assuming the scenario actually runs, you know, those seven days to actually reach, you know, the combat zone, but it may not as well. So then this group over here, we'll say is just two Burks. And then see over here, we'll have another Burke and a Tycho. And let's see what's next. 
How, anything else I might want to add here? Uh, I should probably get a couple more uh, UK groups going here. So let's do a, a couple just type 23s with maybe an LCS as part of this group. Yeah, no, the, that'll be the next group. You can see I'm just kind of randomly placing all these groups around in really no uh, order. So then this group will be a type 23 and an LCS. Now this is, uh, I think this is actually the perfect sort of uh, area for the LCS in that the uh, North Sea is only actually a couple hundred feet deep. It's it's not, although I believe the LCS is, I'm not really sure what they consider littoral. I mean, the North Sea is only about a hundred and a couple hundred feet deep at the deepest point. But the LCS may actually be more for, you know, closer into shore. But given that they're calling it a frigate, you know, it's the problem with the LCS is you, it's not really good at any one thing. And let's go with the next. Take the Bainbridge here. Maybe we have a force kind of coming out of Portsmouth, which is a Bainbridge. Um, say a Burke. Two Burks and say a Daring. Which is actually a pretty powerful group. All right, so we got that group down there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. And let's go with, I think more type twenty, type twenty threes. So Bainbridge. Kind of going with some more mixed force groups over here. So a Burke and two frigates escorting it. Say maybe these groups came through the channel. And I think we need more over here. Maybe. Say two LCSs. Get a type 23. And let's go with the next group. You can see I'm just kind of randomly throwing these groups together. Um, a freedom. I should probably swap out some of these LCSs for, uh, for f independence class. But I'll do that later. So and so say two LCSs and then just another Burke. All right, how many groups is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so I think another two or three groups will do it. LCS into Norfolk. Um, just do a couple more, just British only groups. Now the main plan here is that at the start, all these groups are kind of escorting, you know, convoys of course to Poland, and then I think I found a way to trigger what will amount to dummy air attacks by the French. In that when they they'll act like they're attacking the player, but then they'll break off at the last minute, and so you never actually know at which point during the scenario uh, things are going to turn hot. In that I'll randomly have an event that'll actually set the side to hostile, and they won't turn back. So I think that'll uh, make this a pretty interesting scenario. And let's go with more another couple of Burks. I mean, Burks are the most numerous type of ship in the U.S. So or in the U.S. Navy right now. So it makes sense that there's more of these. And what do we have up here? And I'm trying to reserve the the Tycos for. Uh,
don't want too many of those. So I think I've already have three of them. And so you figure a couple would be available for surface action groups, and then another couple would be with carrier groups. All right, so two destroyers and let's say an LCS over here. And what's next? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so there's 16 groups right there. And to help clean up the map a little bit, show range symbols only for selected units. That looks better. I'm going to save this. All right. And all right, so next up, I think is to set up the some merchants for escorts or for these th groups to be escorting commercial go there we go so Atlantic conveyor container now, one thing to kind of keep in mind here is that these straits over here are not all that deep. You know, 12 meters, 7 meters, 5 meters. You know, I'm sure there's an actual channel through here, but 10 meters there, 7, 5, 8, 22. You know, it's not an actual deep channel, so 14. So I don't think you're getting any uh, supermax freighters through these channels. And then, of course, it deepens as you get out over in this or it widens out. So there's probably not going to be any super max tankers going through the channel. So that being said, container, 15 meter draft, small feeder vessel. This is probably more something what we want. Uh, nine meters, that should work just fine. So we'll have that. Um, here's another feeder. Is not sure what 1600 TEU stands for, but say this group has a couple of small freighters, and then let's add a tanker. Dry bulk. Um, row, row, an LNG ship. Wow, LNG only has an eight meter uh, draft. So we'll call it. So this group's got a couple of commercial container vessels and an LNG group or an LNG ship, which stands for liquid natural gas, just in case anybody doesn't know. All right. Next group. Now, for scripting reasons, these merchants are actually going to be kind of a separate group um, from the actual warships, since the uh, since the commercial vessels will have to be despawning when they get to the ports, which will be over here in Gdansk, Poland, and then probably somewhere up here in Scotland, I'll have another port, as well as probably somewhere up here in Norway, I'll have another one. And I may put another couple of uh, UK ports as well. Whereas I won't want the uh, warships to despawn. Um, so large commercial tanker, large range, 16 meter draft, 12 meter, you know what? Commercial tanker general purpose, eight meter. This will work just fine. So say this group has one of, and I'm also probably not going to be naming these commercial vessels. 
There's going to be just so many of them, it's going to just be hard to keep track. Um, medium tanker, medium range, 10 meter draft, that should work. So, two ships. Now, one thing I will be wanting to do here at some point is I'll want to be creating a bunch of just uh, different imports of all the various combinations of uh, merchant vessels I'm going to have. And I'll probably get to that here in just a little bit. Um, and that when one of these civilian groups despawns, it'll need to spawn another one. And so I think the easiest way to do that will just to be have it randomly uh, spawn a group or uh, import a uh, import file rather than doing it via scripting. Now this group here is the Bunker Hill. So this is my kind of my more powerful group. So this one I'm gonna have set up a little differently in that it's not gonna be escorting commercial vessels. It's going to be escorting some actual um, U.S. Sealift command ships of the SL-7 type. Now the SL-7s are usually kept in kind of ready reserve, but they're a really fast ship. They'll do, uh, where was their max speed? I was... Yeah, their flank speed is actually 32 knots compared to, say, like one of these commercial tankers, which has a max speed of 18. So these SL-7s are actually uh, really fast. And they're not really resupply. They're usually used for um, pre-positioning forces. So we'll say four ships, four SL-7s, and that group. Uh, I'm going to take a quick drink real quick. All right, so next group uh, is the LCS. Let's see. This one will be freighters. Um, back to... I know commercials in here. Why am I blind? Oh, because it's up at the top. Um, let's see, a dry bolt carrier. Mm, maybe that's not what I want. Commercial dry bulk, super max, very large. Panamax, handy size. Not sure what these uh with these uh dry bulk actually carry. Um definitely don't want cruise ships. So I think I mainly want container vessels. I think these are the ma these and uh and tankers are really gonna be what I want. I'm assuming dry bulk carry stuff like uh you know, agricultural stuff. Um, oops, wrong key. So there's a feeder, feeder max. I'm really not sure what the difference between like a feeder max and a new Panamax and a Panamax and a post Panamax is. I'm sure it all means something. And wow, for such a large ship, that thing, actually the draft on it, you can see towards the front here and that you can see the bulbous bow is actually sticking out the water. Um, let's do a Panamax, I think. Let's see what it's 15 meters now. It's probably not what I want. It's probably a little too deep. So if anybody has ideas, I'm not actually sure what actually goes through the, uh, through those straights normally. 
So if anybody has any ideas, I'm completely open to it. Let's do feeder max. Yep, feeder max, and then this group also add a tanker. Commercial supply vessel, no. Those are more for like oil rigs. A uh, general purpose tanker will work just fine. Over here, we have T Norfolk class or Duke class frigates. And we'll say they're, let's say they're escorting just some bunch of just normal tankers. We'll have three tankers under there. Another Norfolk and a Daring. Um, commercial heavy lift. Nope, not what I want. Large trawler. Nope, not really what I want. Row row. I think this is what I want. Roll on, roll off. Draft six meters. Wow. Draft to six meters. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Um, there's one. Um, there's another. All right, got that. This group over here, the steering. More tankers. And Peter Max. This group will be returning out of the straits. Tugboat platform. Oh. Guess that's one way to uh, move a patrol boat. Um, probably not getting at one of these ultra large crude carriers through there, although their draft is only 18 meters. Uh, let's say a medium range tanker. Range, medium range, container vessel, container vessel, 